Neither maleness nor femaleness contribute anything to salvation. I want you to notice that. Jesus saves us. He's the Son of God, but it's not because he's male. It was because he was righteous. It was because he was a sacrifice. It's not his maleness that saves us. The point of our call to worship is this, that in Christ before God, neither slave nor free, rich nor poor, neither male nor female, what counts as Christ? Are you born again? Do you have the Holy Spirit? And it's all equal as far as being lost or being saved. And when you're saved, you are fully God's child. You are fully able to spiritually worship him and you have no need of another human being to stand between you and God. You're Husband is not in any way, shape, or form your mediator, ladies. If your husband dies tomorrow, your relationship to God doesn't change at all because he has nothing to do with it. No man stands between you and Christ. Man, woman, child. The husband is the head of the wife. He is not the spiritual head of the home. That language is scary bad. Do you know why? Because Jesus Christ is the only spiritual head of the church. He has men officers. In some ways they act as under shepherds. But he is the only spiritual head in the church. Our forefathers went to the wall for that doctrine. It's not the pope. It's not the king. It's not the emperor. Christ is the head of the church. Spiritually. And women are in the church. So Christ is just as much head of the church of women as he is of men. How is it that in the home, man replaces Christ? No. Christ is the spiritual head of the home, not the man. Man is the head of the wife. That's a social relationship. That has nothing to do with your relationship to God. You relate to God through Christ, not through your husband, not through your father. Through Christ. Just as much as a man. 